Let's take a look this week at what I have left to read in 2022 for the 1001 Book Countdown. Let's get to it! <music> I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, I don't have a thousand and one book countdown for you. Uh, not because I haven't read a couple books I have, but I want to kind of space out the countdowns a little bit. And so what I thought I would do today instead is bring you what books I have left to read in 2022 that I pre-selected. So if you're not familiar with the 1001 Book Countdown, I will as always leave a card up here for you where you can go and check out the original video and see what it's all about. But basically I'm reading books off of the 1001 Books You Must Read Before You Die list. I'm just slowly making my way through the 1001 list. I have around 920 books left on the main list and 20 something left on the uh, 2022 list. So every year at the beginning of the year, I pre-select 52 books with the idea of reading one per week. Some books take me longer than 50, well, longer than one week. Some books take me far less than one week. So it usually tries to, I try and average it out. Uh, but I thought I would go through what I have left. Uh, so let's get to it. The first two books that I'm going to talk about are ones that I have finished, but I haven't talked about yet on my channel. Uh, they will be in the 1001 countdown for next week, so that's great news. We have a great looking countdown uh, already scheduled kind of for next week. So the first one is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, this was for Jane Austen July, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to talking about that one. And then the second one is Passing by Nella Larson. I just finished this book uh, and I did this as a buddy read with Denise at La Rosa Reads and Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading and it was lovely and both being able to chat with these two wonderful booktubers but also reading this book so I'm looking forward to talking about this one next week as well. I have two books that are actually already in progress. The first one is Dorothy L. Sayers, Murder Must Advertise. I'm doing this as a buddy read with Kevy over at Say Kevy, and we ha are making our way through pretty well in this book. We're about 10 chapters, nine chapters through. Um, however, we're slowing our pace down a little bit because while this book is more readable than one of her last ones, this is the number nine in the Lord, no, number eight in the Lord Peter Whimsey series. Uh, I've read number one, which was Whose Body. This is much more readable than Whose Body, but it's still a bit much, so we're going to just slow it down just a little bit over the weekend and then pick it up again a little bit next week, uh, but Murder Must Advertise. And then the last book that I have started is Kristen Labrin's Daughter by Sigurd Unstead. I'm doing this as a buddy read with my friend Sonia. We have finished book one, both of us, and I have started on book two ahead of schedule because I'm trying to get this done <laughs> before I leave or get book two done. The goal was to read book one in July and book two in August, and I am successful with the July goal. So I'm very happy with how this one is going so far. So that's the end of the books that I have either finished or I am currently reading. I actually had to go and create a spreadsheet <laughs> to kind of plan out when I would be reading these books. I started to get behind on the countdown uh, for 2022 and just really wanted to kind of try and plot out what I would do. So yeah, I do have a whole spreadsheet that goes through and sums up the pages and everything. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So the first two books um, that I actually was supposed to read in June and haven't, this is why I'm still kind of behind, is 1004 by Ben Lerner. Uh, this book is definitely one that is one of the newer books on the list. I may try and pick this up this weekend uh, since I've finished some other things, uh, but 1004 by Ben Lerner. And then the next one I was supposed to read in June and didn't is Home by Marilyn Robinson. And this one is the second book in the Gilead series. I do really want to read this one. I just, when I got sick in June, at the end of June, yeah, all my plans went out the window and then I just didn't pick it up in July. I can guarantee you I'm not picking it up this weekend because I want to pick up either 1004 or one of the other books I have coming up. So Home by Marilyn Robinson right now has is unscheduled for when I will actually tackle this one. 
Uh, so the next three books are the books I have scheduled for July. The first one being The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I did just, I did just talk about this in my August TBR uh, video. So yeah, I'll be doing this as a buddy read with Britta Bowler. And then I have my massive book of A Suitable Boy in August, scheduled in August. And I'll be doing this as a buddy read with Fraser Simon from Springboard Bot. Uh, yeah. Wish us luck. <laughs> and then the last one I have for August is On the Road by Jack Kerouac. So yeah, if you want to learn more about those three books, uh, certainly go check out my August TBR video. All right, so after that, uh, we go into what I have scheduled in July. So July is where my book club starts pe back up again, and for that, we will be reading The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. Pretty happy that this is a fairly small paperback, uh, so hoping that this one is not a huge issue, but Ursula K. Le Guin's The Dispossessed. After that, the books I have scheduled for September are Blindness by Henry Green. This will be my first novel by Henry Green. Henry Green does have around five or six actually on the countdown. I can't remember the exact number, but quite a few. So we will be seeing quite a bit of this particular author. I got this on a discount shelf at a local independent bookstore, which is very cool. I don't know much about this. Uh, I do like these NYRB covers quite a bit, um, but I'm excited to pick this one up also because it's short. So that is the next book in September. And then I have the Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. This particular copy was sent to me as a present by the lovely Shelley Swearingen. I don't know if Shelley's actually read the Age of Innocence or not, but it'll be my second Wharton. I read The House of Mirth and now The Age of Innocence. Uh, I'm excited to pick it up again because I honestly don't remember much about The House of Mirth and really would like to read another one because this author has been talked about quite a bit lately on BookTube. So yeah, that's my next September. And then the last September one is absolutely one of the newer books on the list. This book was actually published in 2013 and was actually, I believe, adapted into a movie, and it is The Circle by Dave Eggers. I'm expecting this one to be kind of a fast read, especially since I have seen the movie, if it is about what I think it is about. Um, so this will be my last 1001 book for September. Unfortunately, it's not the only thing on my September TBR. <laughs> oh, wait till you see that, everyone, because everything I didn't schedule in August got moved to September. So, but yeah, that's my last pick for September. And then I go into October. So October, of course, is Victober. And I have a number of books, far more than I probably should have for Victober. But the first one is my book club pick, which is The Tenet of Wildville Hall by Anne Bronte. I've heard nothing but good things about this book. I can't wait to pick this one up. I think it's going to be a great book club pick. I love these editions, uh, though I don't necessarily love reading from these editions. So I don't know if I'll read from this or if I'll read from a library copy or from an e-copy. I don't know yet, but The Tenant of Wild the Hall is my book club pick. After that, I have two buddy reads already scheduled for October uh, that I know of. Possibly there's a third one coming. Uh, so the first one is with Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia, and we will be reading A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. This will be my second, no, third Dickens. Um, Dickens has a number of books on the list, uh, uh, but yeah, this one, I'm excited to pick this one up. It does have one of the most recognizable first lines in it, which is, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. I had tried to read this at one point and then put it aside. I think I had it as completed for a while on the list for some reason and then went, I should move it uh, back. This copy was actually a present from my son last year for my birthday. So I have had this now a year and haven't read it. So that's the second one. <laughs> I mean, that's the third book that I have for scheduled for October and then I have Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. This will be my second Hardy this year. I previously in June, I believe, read Jude the Obscure uh, and I understand that this one is a little bit easier to kind of make it through. I believe AJ Dunn and I will be doing this as a buddy read and I believe we said October. I, could be wrong. I vaguely remember that is the date and this is the book. So AJ, if I'm wrong, I apologize. So but far from the Madden crowd, I only have, oh, there's like four other Thomas Hardy's on the list though. So I'll be glad to get this one off. 
The other two books, uh, the first one is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. I've heard great things about this book. I'm a little worried about this edition uh, that it looks so chunky, though one of the things that I'm realizing with these editions is that there's a lot of introduction and there's a lot of post text in this book, in these editions. So I don't know if it's as daunting as it seems, but The Woman in White. And then, ah, oh boy, this is probably second on the list as far as books I'm least looking forward to. This book was added on the list because it's the worst rated on the list that I have left to read. Uh, Pamela, I read that one last year, which was rated worse than this, um, but for what I have left, yeah, this is the worst rated, and it's also very old, and so it is, you can't tell from this, but it is Tirant Le Blanc, um, and uh, yeah, look at this too, it's over 600 pages, and I have it in October right now, and I don't even really want to pick it up, so <laughs> I would be worried about me completing the 2022 list because of this book. Um, it's just not exciting me is what I would say. <laughs> Even flipping through it, I'm like, mm, okay. But Tirant Le Blanc uh, is the last book that I have for October. So November, the first November is nonfiction November. So the first book, which is my book club pick, I have H is for Hawk by Helen McDonald. I am extremely looking forward to this one. I've heard, again, really great things about this book. It's one of the few nonfiction books on the 1001 Countdown. The list really doesn't have a large representation of nonfiction. So I'm thrilled to have one for this year at least to do. And then I also have um, a couple of other books that I believe are nonfiction. The first one is called Cataract, uh, and this one actually was put on the list because it had the fewest number of reviews on it. It does say on the front, it's front, it's a Ukrainian poet's memoir of repression and resistance. A uh, little bit weird, not a little bit interesting of a cover where it looks like um, he's eating his own leg. That's a little bit terrifying. Uh, so, but in this being a memoir, so this will be the second book for nonfiction November. The third one, I, I don't know for sure. I believe this author wrote about what they saw, but I don't know if this really truly qualifies as nonfiction. And that is If This Is a Man, The Truth by P Primo Levi. I was supposed to read this back in oh yeah, January, <laughs> and didn't, so I'm going to try and pick it up in November. And then the last one, yeah, it's not nonfiction, <laughs> it's definitely not. Um, so it is H.P. Lovecraft, not this whole omnibus, I don't have to read that, but this is the only copy I have, and it is At the Mountain of Madness, and so it'll be my first Lovecraft, and it's the only Lovecraft on the list, so uh, this is a brick of a book in here, this omnibus, but the actual book that I have to read doesn't seem like it's that long, uh, but I'm excited to read the first Lovecraft, we'll see how that goes, and this book, by the way, was a gift from Michael K. Vaughan, so that was over a year ago when I first started BookTube, Michael sent me that. And then in December, I only have three books. I'm trying to get it low in December because I know in December I want to just pick up some brain candy books and read whatever. And so I will see if I can get some of these other ones pared down. Uh, so the first one is... <gasps> The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. Yeah, this is my book club pick for December. Uh, my husband has said that I'm going to hate this. I I hope not. <laughs> Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia said, you know, maybe this one's a better place to start. So now I'm a little I'm a little bit worried about this one, but this one is the official pick. If I could get it down to where I only had this one to read in December, I would be thrilled. But you see what my other months look like. So there's not a lot of room to shift some things around. Uh, the next book I have is Regeneration by Pat Barker. I believe I'm supposed to do this as a buddy read with Margaret Pennard, but we don't have a date for this one. Uh, so I'll have to ask her about that one. It could move, it could shift, could be I, I have misremembered reading that I'm supposed to read this with Margaret. Any of those are certainly possible. This is a series from what I understand, and unfortunately, or fortunately, book one and book three are on the countdowns. Somewhere in there I have to fit in book two. I don't know. 
why they do that. And then the last one, it was added to the countdown for 2022 because it's the book that is last alphabet, according to the alphabet. So <laughs> it sorted at the very end, and that is Zorba the Greek. Uh, and this one, it says a fiery novel of a modern pag pagan. Cool. Uh, I don't know anything about this book, but that's my last December book. Yeah, I did have to create a spreadsheet because I just was not sure I could fit all of these in. So at least with a schedule, it helps me a little bit. Like I said, I do have two books that I was supposed to read in June and didn't and have don't have them reallocated in the other months. So that's a bit of a challenge. Uh, but yeah, I thought you'd want to see what I have left. I know I had my TBR video from last year that went over all 52 books, but that's been a bit. So I thought I would share. I have a number of new subscribers since then. So this is what I have left. I'm surrounded by books. I keep these on this shelf right here for you. Uh, so you can see them kind of go down, but yeah, right. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, but uh, let me know if there's any of these that you I have read that you're excited about. I am nervous and excited to try and get through the rest of these this year. So we'll see how I do. Last year, I think I ended the 52 weeks with one or two that I didn't read. I can't remember now. Uh, so yeah, not too bad last year. I'm, I don't want to do worse this year. So let's see how I do. But as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks. Bye.